Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top body retinol recommendations. Retinol is a fantastic ingredient to apply to your skin. It can be taken up into the skin and converted to retinoic acid. The downstream effects of that when used long-term are an increase in collagen production, ultimately smoothing out the look of wrinkles and fine lines. Retinol also can get rid of some of the other visible signs of photoaging, things like sunspots, model hyperpigmentation, and it can improve skin texture. There's no reason to restrict use of retinol to just your face. The skin on the rest of your body certainly can benefit from using a topical retinol. Uh, not only for improving the look of sunspots, photo damage, it can improve skin texture overall. If you deal with thinning, crepey skin, which happens as a result of age, then using a topical retinol long-term can boost up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin, helping to firm out the skin. Beyond the cosmetic benefits of using a topical retinol. Retinol, it helps your skin just perform better overall. It actually can help the moisture barrier be stronger and uh, perform better to protect you from irritating things getting in and from uh, losing water. So long-term, it actually can help your skin not be as dry, believe it or not. Even though retinols are drying as a side effect of using them with long-term use, your skin barrier actually gets stronger and performs better. Not only that, using a topical retinol makes it so that if you are someone who tends to heal with hyperpigmentation, the retinol, having it on board, working in your favor in your skin, it will reduce the risk of hyperpigmentation. And retinol also can help your skin handle the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation better. Most people worry that using a retinol will make them uh, more sensitive to the sun. It doesn't actually make you more sensitive to the sun. Believe it or not, it makes your skin better able to handle the damaging effects of the sun. You do absolutely need to wear sunscreen when you are using retinol uh, because it does, um, because it smooths out the surface of the skin, it allows for the sun to kind of come into the skin in a more concentrated manner, but it doesn't actually increase your sensitivity to the sun. In fact, it reduces the damage that would otherwise occur from exposure to the sun. So it's actually beneficial to have on board uh, to, to combat environmental stressors. Where on the body might you wanna use a retinol? Really anywhere, uh, chest, arms, legs, these are all areas that could benefit. Another benefit of using retinol on your legs or arms, for example, is if you have stretch marks, retinol is one of the very few things that holds promise for improving the look of stretch marks on the body, just by boosting up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. How do you choose a retinol for the body? Truthfully, it can be a little challenging. There aren't that many on the market. A word of warning, when you are navigating the market, read ingredients very carefully because some products will claim to be a retinol product. If you read the ingredients though, you'll see the ingredient is retinol palmitate. Now retinol palmitate is a form of topical vitamin A that acts as an antioxidant, but it does not do the collagen boosting effects that an actual retinol will do. So ignore anything that has retinol palmitate. It's fine to use, but don't, don't think of it as a retinol. It's not a retinol. It doesn't do what retinol does. Getting into the products, I will start off by saying the products that you use on your face, you certainly can use on the body. Whether or not that's going to be cost effective depends on how much of your body you want to treat. If it's only a small area, like say just your arms, then by all means, use the products that you use on your face. Remember, with retinol, you do not need a heaping glob. You just need a thin film for delivery of that active ingredient. You do not need a massive glob of product. So you, you certainly can use the stuff that you're using on your face on your body. Um, for example, uh, Adapalene, AKA uh, Different, is the first one I'll recommend. Uh, this uh, is FDA approved for acne. It's actually a form of topical vitamin A already in its active state, so your skin doesn't have to do anything to it to get it ready to start working. It's already ready to go. We have data showing that adapalene, when applied topically, can improve uh, the look of sunspots, help kind of clear up some of them, and many of the visible signs of photoaging. So that is a great choice. Because it's already in its active state, it may be more irritating to you, to you than retinol. Um, and the product itself is not 
particularly moisturizing. So some people may be looking for more of a moisturizing body cream with retinol. Um, so don't sleep on adapalene. It's definitely effective and can be used to body sites. But if you wanna use it to a really large area like your both of your legs, for example, maybe a little bit too expensive. Number two is another one that's great for just kind of more focused areas. And that is the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream. This product is super moisturizing. And while it takes a while for the retinol to start working, the product itself really does just improve the look of textural irregularities, imparts great hydration immediately. This is a fantastic product. One of the best on the market for sure. Johnson & Johnson, the Neutrogena, you know, Neutrogena is a Johnson & Johnson brand. Johnson & Johnson has a stellar track record when it comes to the number of patents for retinol and research behind retinols. I mean, they were right there alongside the research for uh, Retin-A. Um, Johnson & Johnson was simultaneously doing research on retinols and coming out with these patents. So, I mean, that is a brand that you can really, really trust when it comes to retinol is Neutrogena, um, Johnson & Johnson brands. I mean, they really, their R&D for their retinols is fantastic. And that product, I stand by. They make one that I obviously recommend that is free of fragrance comes in a jar, which the jar packaging is more than fine. Don't worry about it. They've stabilized the retinol, so it's fine. You don't have to worry about the jar thing. Um, it, it's, it's actually been demonstrated to be effective in clinical studies, actual patients, so we know it works. Moving along, say you wanna treat a more widespread area, like all of your thighs, um, you know, for improving the look of stretch marks, you wanna use retinol uh, in a body cream, something that's gonna be moisturizing. Highly recommend checking out Advanced Clinical Retinal Firming Cream. You can get this at Walmart. Um, they have an encapsulated retinol in their retinol products that protects the retinol and allows for kind of a sustained uh, delivery, similar to the Neutrogena product. Uh, this brand uh, is also claims to be cruelty free, or at least they say they don't test on animals. So if you're looking for that, uh, definitely check this out. Um, the product itself is actually very moisturizing. It's free of fragrance. In addition to the retinol, it also has um, it also has green tea in it, which is an antioxidant that can help in fighting off some of the free radicals that are generated from environmental stressors that contribute to aging. Now, of course, antioxidants and skincare products are not always the most stable, but it's nice that it's in there for whatever it's worth. And perhaps, if anything, it also helps and aiding in the stability of their retinol. So this is a great product, super affordable. For $12.92, you get 16 ounces of it. The nice thing about this product too is that it's got a pump. Now, you don't have to worry about jar packaging. There's a lot of you know false fear around jar packaging and ingredient stability. The retinol is fine in a jar package, but dang, sometimes it is just hard to get stuff out of a jar, scooping it out. Uh, it's just, you know, a little bit, I don't know. It's, it's a personal preference. I too prefer a pump uh, than having to open, you know, unscrew tops and things like that. It's just much easier and I prefer a pump. So this comes with a pump, which is really awesome. Um, highly recommend checking it out. You can get it at Walmart or Amazon and Amazon is an authorized distributor of their products. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, it's actually pretty challenging to find retinol body moisturizers or retinol body products that are free of fragrance. It's really hard actually. Um, so that's one. The next one is definitely not inexpensive. It's by good old Paracone MD. I recommended this. I think I recommended it in, I don't know, maybe an Ulta video. It's the Cold Plasma Plus Fragile Skin Therapy. It's currently sold out on their website, but I think you can get it at Ulta or uh, Sephora. $49 for six ounces. This product, in addition to retinol, also offers a peptide, Hepta Peptide 7. Now, peptides in skincare products, at any rate, they act as humectants. They'll help your skin be better moisturized and look smoother and firmer simply by helping with hydration. This Hepta Peptide 7 uh, peptide, the company that makes it claims that because the peptide mimics uh, some of the sequences in the innate immune system. They claim that the peptide helps in promoting 
healing and repair. And they have a study that is an industry study, so not peer reviewed or anything, in which they claim that in uh, postmenopausal women who are vulnerable to uh, crepey skin as a result of age-related change and loss of estrogen, they claim that this peptide, when applied topically, has a firming effect. So if you're someone who's got that crepey skin, if this peptide works like they claim it does, you know, that would be an additional benefit of it. And if anything, simply by having something that is moisturizing and hydrating, it will plump up skin cells and just smooth out the look of fine wrinkles and lines. And you know, that's something that we're all obviously desiring. I have to sneeze. Achoo. I am a really loud sneezer. <laughs> Now this product also has 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. That is a form of vitamin C. Um, vitamin C is an antioxidant that when applied to the skin can, in theory, get in and boost up collagen production and help with hyperpigmentation. However, as you guys know from my videos, vitamin C is not super stable. So they have all these other forms of vitamin C and 3-O-ethyl is one such form that is more, it's more stable. However, there's very little to no data on the efficacy of 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid for the anti-aging benefits that ascorbic acid offers. So don't think of it as a vitamin C that's going to do those things that you're seeking, but at any rate, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, it seems to be an effective antioxidant, so probably helping mostly in this product to protect the retinol and keep it stable. And there's also some data to show that 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid inhibits tyrosinase, the enzyme responsible for pigment production. So it you know, may have a skin brightening effect and help with hyperpigmentation which you know, when you're seeking a product like this, you're presumably looking to improve some of the visible signs of photoaging and hyperpigmentation often goes along with that, like on the upper chest and again, you know, the forearms, the backs of the hands and that sort of thing. Paracone MD is cruelty free. Um, so, you know, I know a lot of you guys are seeking that. Uh, not inexpensive, but truthfully, I have actually been very impressed with a lot of the Paracone MD moisturizers. They're very good. Like. There's a hypoallergenic one that's actually quite good. You know, this product is really marketed to those with crepey skin. I think the peptide kind of potentially offers a little bit more in that arena, um, but you certainly could use it for, you know, other benefits of using a retinol to skin on other body sites besides the face. <laughs> Number five is Polish Choice Retinol Skin Smoothing Body Treatment. This is $29 for four ounces. Polish Choice products are fantastic. Uh, the ingredients are very good. Beyond the retinol, this product is super moisturizing. It's formulated with like shea butter, which helps um, keep the skin hydrated, helps seal in water, reducing transepidermal water loss. This product also has grapeseed oil and evening primrose oil. Those are gonna help soften dry skin cell edges. Those oils also have antioxidants in them that have anti-inflammatory effects, which will help with concerns around skin aging. And also if you, you know, have irritation, it will kind of help with that because retinol can be pretty irritating. Um, and evening primrose oil actually when applied topically, there's some data to support its use for people with eczema. So it's a good emollient. I mean, Polish Choice products, they typically, you know, make sure that they don't include problematic ingredients. Like they go above and beyond to avoid commonly problematic ingredients. Um, so that, that's great. It's also got tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. Now this is a form of vitamin C that is lipid soluble. So vitamin C to backtrack is that antioxidant, uh, L-ascorbic acid, it's water soluble. So one of the challenges for manufacturers with that ingredient is it's challenging to formulate it into a product such that it actually gets into the skin, can cross the waxy lipid layer um, and get into the skin. This form is lipid soluble. So it has a greater um, likelihood of getting into your skin. Unlike 3-O-ethyl um, ascorbic acid, the other form that I mentioned earlier, uh, tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate, there's actually some data to suggest that it, it might actually be effective, just like L-ascorbic acid, but very, very, very limited data. So don't get too confident in it, but at any rate, it does appear to actually get into the skin. 
And if anything, it seems to be much less irritating than L-ascorbic acid. So if you tried a vitamin C serum in the past, found that it was irritating, don't be nervous that this has vitamin C in it. Um, it may, you may find it's less irritating. Last but not least, a brand that I love um, is Replenix. They're smoothing body lotion with retinol. This is $85 for seven ounces, so not inexpensive whatsoever. Um, but Replenix does a really good job with their products. As a matter of fact, I love their sunscreen, the Ultimat one, it's really good. They're kind of known for including green tea polyphenols in their products, which this has. In addition to the retinol and that green tea, it also has caffeine in it. Now, caffeine is an antioxidant, which when applied topically to the skin, not only you know can in theory help scavenge free radicals, it has a um, vasoconstrictive uh, ability within the skin. It's kind of temporary. So people will note an improvement in redness, which is temporary. Uh, and you, there's also some data to suggest that topical caffeine may help improve the look of cellulite. And this product also has the antioxidant resveratrol, which uh, is great you know, for potentially scavenging free radicals, reducing inflammation and all of those things. And it also has uh, ceramides in it. Ceramides are wonderful for the moisture barrier, kind of help combat dry skin. Um, so this is a really good one and free of fragrance. Highly recommend it. Um, these are all great products to consider on your body. All right. So you're probably wondering, can we use these products on the face? Short answer is yes. Whether or not they're going to work is hard to say for sure, the same way that a dedicated facial product would, simply because nine times out of 10, the manufacturers of these products, they did their, their in-house testing on body sites, not on facial skin. So they're not gonna tell you to use it on the face. You know, I always tell you guys, try any body moisturizer that you have, always try it as a facial moisturizer. But whether or not the retinol in the body moisturizer will work the same way that a retinol in a facial moisturizer works on the facial skin, I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't. Um, so sure, try it. If, any, if anything, you know, if you find it too irritating, then go back to trying a dedicated retinol product for your face. How effective is it going to be on the face? You know, I, I can't imagine it's going to be any different than any other retinol. Um, so you might try that. You might actually find that just having a retinol body lotion, trying it on your face, if it doesn't cause too much irritation for you, then it might be a more affordable thing for you in the long run. Where on the body should you not apply retinol? Uh, you want to be very careful about applying it to the inner thighs, anywhere where you have redundant skin or skin folds, um, and you don't want to put it in your armpits. I know a lot of you guys are always looking for ways to brighten up the armpit area. This would not be it. The reason for this is that anywhere where you have skin on skin contact becomes, it's just moist. I know people hate that word. Moist and the friction makes irritation very, very likely, especially with retinol. And retinol, remember, is going to um, kind of peel off the top dead layer of the skin in the beginning, so that's gonna cause some irritation for you. So you don't wanna put it in those areas, and you wanna actually be pretty conservative with using it on your neck. The skin on the neck is very thin and prone to irritation from retinol. So for the neck, I always recommend, if you're gonna use retinol, just use a tiny, tiny amount and try just using it like once a week um, and you know maybe twice a week at the most. You don't necessarily need to use retinol every single day for it to be effective. Uh, if you tolerate using it every day, great. Um, then, you know, by all means. But for the neck in particular, you wanna be really conservative and just keep it to, to once a week. Uh, sometimes people will get into trouble because, you know, a lot of these retinols that I mentioned here, I think all of them actually, there is sustained release, um, sustained action or sustained release type delivery system. And what that means is that it's not like you're gonna put it on and boom, you should have side effects right away. It kind of, it kind of sneaks up on you. And so what people don't real, people don't realize this, and they use it maybe too frequently in the beginning, and then all of a sudden that peeling and irritation starts creeping up on them, and they've been using it so frequently that it's like boom all at once. 
So go really, really slowly and be very conservative. Don't get too confident and think like, oh, I'm doing well, I'm not irritated, whatever, because it will sneak up on you. And I think that is one reason why a lot of people fail retinol is they use it too frequently in the beginning and they're going along thinking it's all fine and then boom, all of a sudden their skin is like burning, super sensitive. So always err on the side of being conservative and going like really slowly and not, you know, using using it every day. The last thing I will mention is, you know, a lot of people, they'll try and analyze ingredient lists to determine ingredient efficacy. You can't do that really. And especially with retinol, a lot of people will be like, well, it's lower down on the ingredient list. It must not be effective. The reason you can't really do that is that different manufacturers, they use different techniques to, to stabilize their retinol, you know, micro emulsions, what, what not. Um, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, but I do know at a very elementary level that uh, retinol formulations, they differ quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people will just marry themselves to this idea that the, because something is low on an ingredient list, it's not going to be effective. And that's simply not true. I mean, there are so many topicals in dermatology that we use, topical medications that we prescribe. The concentration is like 0.05%, very, very low. And it's super effective. Um, so yeah, don't go off of this whole order of appearance thing. Um, it's not the best way to go about it. When it comes to things that are actually FDA approved though, like adapalene, which is you know the more active form, adapalene is FDA approved for acne. And because it's an over-the-counter medication, adapalene will be called out separately, at least here in the States, that's how we do it, will be called out separately um, as the active ingredient. But retinol is a non-drug cosmetic ingredient that behaves similar to adapalene, but a little bit you know, more slowly. Because it's a cosmetic ingredient and not a, not a drug, you know, it'll appear anywhere on the ingredient list based on relative abundance. But relative abundance to other ingredients, it does not determine efficacy of the product. Uh, it's a formulation overall. So don't try and you know, study ingredient lists to try and figure out what's gonna be a more effective uh, retinol to use. So those are my top retinol recommendations for the body. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.